And welcome into the round table and FedEx, a company that has had a great history to it. Unfortunately, going through some very rough times, getting back to last September and then through now with more additions of announced layoffs and perhaps maybe, maybe not the bloom off the rose, but maybe the shine off the truck. And joining us to talk about it a little bit is Mark Solomon, our staff writer and based in Atlanta, Georgia, who has covered FedEx for, shall we say, a long time. Mark, thanks for, for joining us. Good morning, Bill. How are you? Good. I'm, I, I am well. Hope you are as well. Uh, this is an interesting topic. You wrote an interesting commentary on this called The Purple Promise Damaged. Uh, this is a road that probably many FedEx people didn't necessarily see coming um, in terms of that company was doing well, it was growing, and then all of a sudden, uh, unexpected announcements. What's your take on FedEx right now? Uh, there going through almost what I would call cataclysmic change for this company. Mm -hmm. um, they have been around for 50 years. They've never had, uh, they call them, uh, I guess, workforce reductions. Uh, these are positions being eliminated, call them layoffs, whatever you want, however you want to describe it. Uh, this is a company that has a remarkable history, as you said, but also a terrific culture, one that has always has been uh, marked by a deep bond between management and employees. Uh, they, I guess, in, in the past year, for example, they've added two outside directors to the board. These are people that are not FedEx people, these are outsiders whose primary objective is to boost shareholder value. Uh, then the, the catalyst of all of this was the um, extremely poor fiscal first quarter. They had to pre-announce uh, their results. Their operating income fell through the floor. Uh, the main issue is that they did not uh, cut costs fast enough to offset the dramatic decline in volumes on the Trans-Pacific air cargo lanes. Mm -hmm. um, that's when the layoffs began, back in June, when they saw that the market had basically collapsed uh, almost overnight. They did not foresee this, and they could not react fast enough to save the first quarter, which is why they had to pre-announce. I think at that point, Bill, the company began to look at ways to, I guess, be more agile, be more efficient, and they began to look at labor cost reductions, or I say labor employee cost reductions. Um, and that's kind of where we are right now. It's um, many middle managers, I think, are concerned that they will be the next to be eliminated because most of the cuts or a lot of the cuts have been above them. Um, and uh, I, it's hard to say if the company is through making reductions. It's, um, it's a, some have called FedEx a bloated company. Mm -hmm. There may be a valid point to that, but uh, nonetheless, it's still a, a shock to the system because this is a culture that has almost been cradle to grave employment. Uh, and as I said, a family oriented relationship. If you put in the work, you are taken care of. And that seems to, at least for now, to be ruptured. Yeah, um, as you, we have seen layoffs across the board. Uh, Amazon announcing large layoffs. Microsoft, other companies as well. Uh, this doesn't seem to be limited, obviously, of course, to FedEx. But is FedEx perhaps in a slightly different position in terms of how these layoffs are coming, or is this just simply the economy that we're living in, and this had to happen anyway? I think it's both. I think the economy has slowed. Um, the pandemic spike is over. Uh, we're getting back to some level of pre-pandemic reality with, with volumes. Uh, and again, we're in a, a slowing economy, both here and in markets abroad. Uh, interest rates are going up. 
Um, and the, uh, many economies are, are struggling to keep, you know, to, to remain vibrant when the consumer is, is starting to pull back. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in terms of FedEx's culture, as you mentioned, obviously, as you, as you said, cradle to grave, uh, they take care of their employees. Uh, how tough is it right now for FedEx to have to grapple with these changes? I think FedEx understands the, the reputation that it has uh, as a terrific place to work. That's been built over decades. I can't imagine, and I'm not inside the company, I can't imagine this being easy for anybody who has to uh, lay people off, eliminate positions. Uh, and what I've heard, and again, this is in my reporting, is that the layoffs were at random. Uh, they, there was no real rhyme or reason to it. They weren't performance oriented. Uh, I talked to one person who had always gotten terrific, uh, evaluations and this person got laid off. And again, there, there doesn't seem to be any, I guess, lack of a better phrase, rhyme or reason as to why the company took the actions it did. Uh, people are shocked. They're reeling because they didn't see it coming. Uh, many of the people who were laid off, Bill, were, were upper level in this last round, mm -hmm. were upper level executives, many making 150 and above. Uh, they couldn't conceive of being on the end of a pink slip but they were and again the the suddenness of it the randomness of it again not what i'm telling you but what people have told me is what blows them away and no other way to put it yeah, moving in a, if there's in, a, in a direction forward now, uh, in terms of where FedEx is going, I remember you and I and Zach Strickland talking about FedEx being too big to fail, and I'm not even going to try and broach that particular subject. But as you look at this, is is this are these moves a riding of the ship, or has the ship maybe sprung a leak, and now we're just we're, we're trying to repair that as as it even tries to begin to to uh, chart a course forward. It's a, it's a writing of the ship. Mm -hmm. uh, the ship had taken on a lot of water. I, it was bloated. People who are familiar with the company for decades said they were just too top heavy. They weren't focused on cost cuts as, as robustly as UPS has been. Uh, mm -hmm. UPS is very focused on efficiency, cost savings, FedEx has not been as vigilant. I think what you're seeing now is an attempt to bring that vigilance up to UPS's level. I'm not saying they're there. I'm not drawing a comparison between the two companies. Right. But uh, I think FedEx is positioning the company for you know, what it sees to be a, a slowdown in the market. Plus, they're, they're saving billions of dollars. They've got multiple cost-saving initiatives underway that will save them about $7 billion. I mean, it's a significant chunk of money. And the, the company probably needs to operate more efficiently. They are not... You know, many people say they're not up to UPS's standard when it comes to efficiency. Gotcha. Uh, said that the the manner in which these cuts were implemented, carried out, uh, is is something that that I had I couldn't imagine after you know 
following the company for nearly 40 years. Yeah, uh, just real quick, we've got about uh, 20 seconds left here. Do you think that we are seeing the end of these, and I dare say use the word layoffs, but are, are, we, are we at the end of this or do you think there's still more coming? Bill, I do not know. Mm -hmm. um, my guess is that FedEx will now look deeper down the, the management rungs, uh, but I have no way of knowing uh, and uh, that's really all I can say on that. Yeah, we, we, we know that you'll keep a close eye on this because obviously FedEx a huge, huge player uh, in, in the freight world. Mark Solomon, thanks so much for joining us. You're welcome, Bill. Have a good weekend. You as well. All right, we'll take a short break. We'll be back. We wrap up our show right after this.